those people on that wall. Yeah. And of course, uh, Ray Charles, uh, uh, Aretha Franklin, uh, uh, James Brown, uh, Carlos Obviously, I can't, uh, I can't, curse, I can't see the name of them, but curse. Uh, and ooh, this, these two got me though. Ella. The second person, the woman in the middle. Is Eleanor Fagan, I, I known to the world as Billie Holiday. Billie Holiday, I was just saying, yeah. And the other person is the son of a dentist, an upper middle class young man who white folk couldn't do nothing with. They were hypnotized by his music, and he didn't need the music industry because Miles Davis' family, was they already had money. So when the Jews came for him, they had to give him what he wanted the way he wanted it. So that's Miles. Mm -hmm. The same way each one of these people change the music industry because Ray Charles, as you know, yeah. owned his masters. Yeah. James Brown owned James Brown. So did Miles Davis, Billie Holiday. The only thing happened to her when they realized how smart she was, the dope, the drugs, is what took her down. Curtis Mayfield was the first person to put out message music. And since him, you don't hear that kind of message music anymore. We all now sing about more dope, more money, more hoes, more clothes. But when you listen to the music of Curtis Mayfield, he was talking to us. Aretha Franklin. Before Aretha Franklin, all of your divas were light-skinned, beautiful, Eurocentric women. This woman came out, Afro, black features, opened her mouth, and changed the scope of music forever. Um, that's I had to ask you to go back because just a minute ago we were talking and you were kind of talking about the red velvet and you talked about going to Memphis with the three suitcases. Um, I was trying to, I, I was simply just trying to sit in with some, some bands down in Mobile, Alabama. And uh, I was having a hard time doing it because the music industry is still a male dominated and white male dominated field and even our males you can get up there you can sound like uh, you know you can you can be whispering and chanting but if you have that look they'll go into the studio manufacture you a voice and market you well, somebody told me nobody wanted to hear uh he was polite nobody wants to hear a plus size 40 year old almost 40 year old woman singing Nobody's going to give you a recording contract, which is good because most young musicians really think they want a record deal and they don't. Right, right, right. So, I had uh, written a marketing plan and I kind of leased it to a healthcare company because they needed African American customers, basically. And they didn't know how to reach the African American demographic. I told them I don't need a marketing budget. I'm going to double your census in six months. When I do, you're going to make me completely responsible for that, and I will do that for you for forty thousand dollars. They said, "Okay, no, okay," because and I told them I don't want the money until you get the results. In six months, their census had doubled. They started out with twenty-five clients. Within a year from the date that I started with them, they had 125 and they were billing each one of them between five and seven thousand dollars a month. I took the money, did a work for hire, hired a studio, I wrote the music, copyrighted it, got a publisher's of a CAE number, and I produced that glorified demo. Right. What I need to do is I need to kind of point out some stuff because being in the industry, I don't know if y'all know me and I used to be in the industry, what she just did was gave you not only a history lesson, but a business one-on-one -on -one lesson in the music business because we're talking about the copyright and we're talking about owning the rights to, to our music and yeah. creating the industry because most artists, can they, they can sing, I think you can sing, but you have no creative outlet because you can't produce your own music. So you have to go to somebody else and then get them to put their creativity behind your 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 vocal ability. You know well, it's the music business, not the music music. Okay, that's right. So when I got it, I did a little research. I got a barcode, um, an ISRC code, 
and uh, you've got a lot of places that can press your disc. You come up with you some graphics and, and then you off to the race. Put it in a digi pack. Right. Hand it to a few DJs. But you also, you know, I know they tell you that payola is illegal, but right, 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 right. it's still working. But in it, between enough internet DJs and me talking enough trash on the internet, eventually people started downloading it. I made my money back. And the thing that bothered me most is that when I would meet these musicians, I mean, phenomenal musicians, musicians who have played on records that were hits. You hear the first few bars, you know the song because it was a hit. And these men have to choose between buying their medicine, paying their rent, buying groceries because they don't own their music. They didn't know. They were robbed. And now they're getting older and dying. And so I took that and I founded a, a music, a social services and health organization called Music Heals Memphis to bring social services and health care primarily to musicians. And now that I'm here in Mississippi, I hope to bring it here to Mississippi. Yeah. Okay. So what, what is your advice to you? Besides what you just gave to, to young musicians starting out, because you said uh, they don't want a record deal. So what do they want? What, what, what direction would, would you say they should take? Well, the traditional record deal is not good for the artist. Okay? It's just not. Now, as much as I'm not crazy about the lyrics of the gangster rap that came out in the early 90s, those boys changed the game. They changed the game. Okay? So, the artist has to see themselves as a product. You have to see yourself as a product. They no longer have artist development departments and record labels. So when you go to them, you have to be ready. You have to be ready. And you can't just be good because pretty faces and tight bodies. Dime a dozen. Dime a dozen. And I'll tell any singer, any diva, especially women. You leave out of Jackson, Mississippi and you go 50 miles in either direction. Sunday morning. Go down here in one of these little towns that's just got a post office and a gas station. And don't go to the big mega church. You know, don't go to the New World Believers Christian Center. Go down there to Rocky Mount Missionary Baptist Church, a fine baptized holiness church, and it's a little girl in there, about 17 years old in the choir, and she's taking the top off the church, and ain't nobody gonna never hear. You can leave here Saturday evening, by one o'clock, go to any black funeral. Miss Lizzie, Miss Hattie, Miss Mary Jean, Miss May Francis gonna get up there with that lace handkerchief and shut it down. Yeah. Nobody ever heard her. And she is just as good as some people on the wall. The internet is how I got found. It's playing on the internet. But if you don't know about copywriting, if you don't know about songwriters' rights, if you don't know about publishing, if you don't know the basics of a performance agreement or a record contract, you're going to get screwed. Because nobody at that label is your friend. And if they know that you know this, you might want to peel it back a bit. Because if they think that you're young and you're dumb, they will be more likely to want to work with you. You look at all the truly talented artists. John Legend. John Legend's not a dummy. But he didn't blow up to be a megastar. Beyonce knows her dad is from right over there in Alabama. He was already a businessman before his daughter went into the music business. Right. And that is why it has not chewed her up and spit her out like so many others. And you're not going to get famous overnight, so you need an education. You need an education. Mm -hmm. So the day is over with 
overnight sensations. And well, you know, nobody's fixing to go down here on Ferris Street and walk into the juke joint and hear you on open mic night put a band together and take you off on the Chitlin Circuit and make you famous. The Chitlin Circuit is dead. And whether people realize it or not, there is a concerted effort to suppress genuine black artists and black music. That's why all of a sudden you hear all these soulful white artists. Yep. Timberland. I mean, not Timberland, but uh, oh God, I can't think. Aguilera. Of yeah. And uh, what's John. the guy? John B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what's the one that Robin uh, Thick? Robin son, yeah, Robin Thick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. These um, people are making Justin millions. Timberlake. Yeah. yeah. They they making millions right. imitating me and you. Right, singing the same songs. Yeah. The song. <laughs> imitating me and you, and all of our young black kids are sounding like, like them. Like toys. Yeah, 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 yeah. Creativity is, is, is gone. Uh, R&B is dying in our community. Right. <laughs> but that's been that's been uh, that's been a while too because uh, if you if you remember back when it was uh, uh, New Kids on the Block, it was the Backstreet Boys, and uh, of course, because everybody used to always say that uh, um, that. Uh, I can't why well, I can't think of it. Uh, uh, candy girl, you know, uh, uh, new, new edition. edition, yeah, new edition would always complain because they were saying that they were getting snuffed out, so to speak, because of all the people that came after them. But it was it was the truth. It was what was going by design. On. It was just what was going on there, you know. Because don't you think that yeah. everybody here think real hard? Yeah. When is the last time you saw emerging? 106 in Park. Is that still come on? Uh. Uh, remember 106 in Park? With shows like that, they broke new artists. When is the last time you saw a black band? You remember the Ohio Players, Earth, Wind, yeah, and Fire, yeah, Daz, yeah. Uh, Lakeside? Yeah. When is the, the gap band? When is the last time you saw five guys, five brothers? And when the lights come on, they stand there with horns and guitars and key. What's the last time you saw that? It's a dinosaur. Yeah. Okay. Now here in the South, you still have a high school band. You do. In a lot of schools in urban areas, in larger cities up north, they don't have a band program. They don't have a band program. You remember when y'all were dating <laughs> girls, their parents didn't want to let you in the house, all the nice girls, when you went to a nice girl's house, what did they have in the living room? A piano. Not anymore. Don't see that anymore. Not anymore. Well, we're talking, just in case you want to know, we're talking to Red Velvet. Hi. <laughs> Internet sensation, uh, business mogul. <laughs> I don't know if I've been a business mogul. Did it some, yeah. something happen? Something broke in the news today? I don't know. Blues historian, don't don't let it fool you. Blues historian, you you name it. Just a and 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 a wealth of wisdom uh, with with your uh, with your with your with your internet videos. Oh, you're talking about talking to the, to my sisters. Yeah, yeah, yeah talking yeah, to your sisters, yeah. brothers too, brothers too. Yeah, giving words of wisdom out there. I talk yeah. to the brothers every yeah. now and then, but they don't seem to be as up in arms about what's going on as the women. <laughs> yeah, because you know, every every day I get a either I overhear it or I get it in my inbox or. You know, I'm just tired of hearing that, you know, black men ain't. I'm tired of hearing that. <laughs> you know, I'm tired of hearing actually, that. I will tell you that in society, it's almost like we don't exist. What I mean by we don't exist is if you're not sagging, if you're not thugged out, you know, if you're not uh, just overly aggressive, then, you know, you, 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 you or let me say it like this, a feminine, a push to be a feminine. Then, uh, you, you know, you got a point. You know, you, know, you know, you got a point. We're, we're like dinosaurs, you know. Talking so about just the regular brothers. Just the regular brothers. Brother. Brother. Trying to make it is uh, almost exactly so. Yeah.
didn't exist. It's, it's like, just that regular bro. <laughs> just a regular guy trying to make it. You know what I'm saying? He don't exist. And and most of it is uh because uh, I feel like a lot of it we do bring on uh, some uh, some of that on ourselves. I will say you know sometimes we get the cars. Everybody get cars that are, that are stacked against you. And I'm not gonna say everybody like some more than others. We got the cars stacked against us. But uh, I feel like a lot of times that that the everyday average brother who gets smothered between the folks that say, you know, they can't make it because of their, their because because of those circumstances that hold them back. And the thug mouth brothers and the and the feminine brothers, you know what I'm saying? They get lost in them. I, I don't know if anybody's ever gonna watch your show again, and I may have to hire security after I make this statement. You play, you play big with. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you know when you play big with, you get to look at the cards, you get to keep some, you get to yeah, take some. Yeah, you get to some back. Right, right. Okay. Well, when we got here, we had a pretty interesting deck. Okay, when we first when we first got out playing off the boat. That's true. We had a pretty jacked up deck. Right. But after emancipation, during the period of reconstruction, they got kind of good. Right. Okay. Then you had the NATO period. But the Democrats, the Ku Klux Klan, everybody, you know, they was the same noise they're trying to scare us about the Mexican coming over here taking our jobs. See, they had to come start talking crazy to y'all and taking, making y'all look like savages. Because, see, now you all were able to compete on the free market. Just for Jim Crow. Right. For the, for the white boy job. But y'all had all the skills because y'all was the blacksmith, y'all was the carpenters, y'all had built everything. And our own communities too. Own communities, and then y'all, then some of you Negroes went, had the nerve to go out there and start starting your own towns and naming them Freedmanville. Right. <laughs> you can go in any state and find a the town or a remnant of a town called Freedmanville. Then you had the nerve to go out there at the intersections of Greenwood, Arch, and Pine and build a black thriving community, a black town. So we couldn't have that. So we shuffled the deck. And as black soldiers went to the war, they in the trenches, they come back, it's the 40s. Brothers got GI, they got, we doing good. We started getting, everything started getting good. Civil rights movement started getting started, the deck getting better. Heroin. Then we had four aces. We had the foundation of education. We had family. We had a shared struggle. And because we had started owning land, right. we was practicing cooperative economics. Those was the four aces. Okay. Here come the four horsemen. Dope. Yeah. Welfare. Integration. Yeah. And we shuffled the deck. We helped take the other aces out the deck because then came along the pseudo women's lib movement. And as my uncle would say, God damn, I reckon. Because between dope, welfare, pseudo integration, and the women's lib movement, we got jacked up. And once we got jacked up, see what I'm saying? Because, mm -hmm. see, I didn't need no job, Mr. Twin. I didn't need to be liberated. I didn't have no business following Gloria Stein and out in the street burning my bra. Right. I was already liberated. I had a job over here. I had a job when my black ass got off the boat. I cleaned their house, come home, clean my house, raise their children, come and raise their children. See what I'm saying? Black women and white men always did what we wanted to do. 50 years ago, right here in Jackson, I could have had a house over in Georgetown. Okay? Mm -hmm. It could have been 9 o'clock at night, way after dark, and I could have still been over there in Fondren, and wasn't nobody going to stop me at the bus stop and ask me where I was going. Because I could have been over here working, taking care of some of these people, cheering, babysitting, they were going to ask me nothing. Nothing. White man leave out from over here, go over there in Georgetown. Nobody wasn't going to dare say nothing to Mr. Charlie. But you let Miss Elizabeth be over there in Georgetown after dogs. Are you black? Let's be over here. 
after dark, it was going to be a problem. So black women didn't need to be liberated. But when that happened... The women's movement. Yeah, the women's movement, the white women's movement. Right, right, right. When they started making us believe that we were oppressed because they were oppressed, then they told some, you know, the, the ones of us, you know, we go to college, you got a little degree, you got one of them Alfred Dunner suits and some pumps, and we had the job and bees around the neck, some perfume. We had a job. So we were now told that we were marrying down if we married a skilled labor. So we got on with the women's movement. Well, now black ass woman in Cosmopolitan magazine, but we felt like we had something in common with them. Vietnam come back. Dope coming to the country. Women done getting liberated now. So they come over there and tell me, you put him out. He ain't got no job. He ain't doing nothing for we give you a place to stay. We'll feed you. All that. So now I'm liberated. Getting ready to get liberated. They're getting ready to bring the dope in here because they get you out the house. Then the seven is come and affirmative action come. Man, you got the same degree. We're going to go apply for the same job. We're going to get a job. Yeah. Woman? Right. Minority? Yeah. Double women. Killed the man out again. Snuffed him out. So over a period of time, they started emasculating the black men. And they started empowering black women to the point where, other than reproduction, so you weren't needed. You, you, you got me thinking two things. One, what? do you do, is do you ever thought of a a fix or a solution? And two, you know you're gonna have a lot of our fans mad. Well, <laughs> well, well, say, well, the thing I'm, is, just, well, sorry, sorry. that's the truth. It's something that uh, needs to be said, and I, and I don't say again. When, when I was alluding to earlier, is that I feel like as a, as a black man, we we have, we have a tendency to say, well, this is the reason why, and this is the reason why, as opposed to trying to focus on, well, what are your solutions? What are you going to do to, to me or to internally to fix whatever you need to fix with you to get where you need to be? But but it still need to be said. It well, here's said. the thing. I want you to go to the hospital tomorrow and just walk in there and tell the doctor, I'm sick, I need some medicine, fix me. First thing he's going to mm -hmm. start assessing are your signs and symptoms. Right. You got to see what's ailing you. Sometimes it can be just the history. Sometimes he got to go and put you in the machines and see what happens. Because you have a pathology, which is what it's doing. And then you have an etiology, right. how it got started. Right. And everybody right now is looking at what's, what's going on. And they know there's something wrong, Not but a lot of people under a certain age, do not know how it got like this. You've got young ladies now, 25, 30 years old. Mom ain't never been married. Right. Grandma ain't right. never been married. Right. <laughs> they don't know what it looks like. Uh, and even the males that's in their family that they love dearly, their brothers, their uncles, their cousins, they've never seen them really develop as males. Right. Because there's a certain sector of women, especially black women, they don't mean to do it. They don't even realize that they're doing it. But we have raised our daughters to be very strong. And raised men to be weak. Because we were afraid that if you grew up strong, if you were too powerful, that you would be killed. And over generations, we protect our sons because we don't want the police to kill them. Right now, if you go back into certain rural neighborhoods or if you talk to people who were older, you ever heard old people say, don't take trash out after dark? You ever heard that? Oh, yeah. Whose job is it primarily in the house to take the trash out? The man. Okay. Under the garage or somewhere near the house now, we have the big garbage bin. We roll it out to the street. Right. On trash day. Right. But in... Back in that time, in the country, people had what they call a trash pile. Oh, yeah. And it was several yards away from the house. 
when the night riders and paddy rollers was rolling, your son could take the trash out and never come back. And that's where that comes from. That's why in a lot of old black houses, you really believe that it is bad luck to take the trash out after dark. We have feared for our sons ever since they got here. It has been the job of this society to either emasculate or, or kill you. Destroy them, right? Yeah. Or make you a useful eunuch so that you're no threat to them. And you have some eunuchs walking around now. They're, they're intelligent, they're smart, they're very useful. But they're no threat. Ben Carson. <laughs> Highly intelligent. <laughs> Already there. <laughs> Highly intelligent. Brilliant man. Smart. Right. Right. He ain't no threat to them folks. Right. Now, somebody like. I, I would have to question you on the common sense side with Ben Carson, though. <laughs> I mean, Ben Carson is a brilliant man. Right, I, I agree. I'm I mean, just, I'm just kidding. anytime somebody can open up part of your body, go in there and fix it, he's a brilliant man. Right, right, I get him, Mr. But Wait. the brother, he's been neutralized. So, so the fix is people have to first understand who you really are and what happened to you. If I t had come and got you, from your family, mm -hmm. took you way off somewhere. Taught you a different language. Beat your ass. Yeah. Well, you know. Work the hell out you. Give right. you substandard food, substandard yeah. housing, yeah. no health care, and even made you believe that God is white. I can make you do anything. I can create some social ills. For generations. But if you ever find out what happened, you ever find out who you are, somebody show you what happened to you, it might take a minute because cognitive dissonance is something serious. Cognitive dissonance. Once you find out and you start teaching it to your children and they teach to their children a couple generations, that's not going to be as effective. The first thing that we have to do is teach our people who they really are. We are the only people who would do this. I'm going to come get you. I'm going to take you from your folk. I'm going to mistreat you real bad. Do you give you a real dirty deal? I'm not going to teach you. I'm not going to let you read. I'm not going to let you write. I'm not going to let you learn anything about who you are. And then one day, because of the law, you're free. I'm still the same person that's been doing you real bad. But all of a sudden, I'm going to come to you and say, you all have children now. I'm going to build schools for you and I'm going to educate your children. Would you trust me to teach your children anything? Yeah, that's another point, yeah. Right. But we do. We do, yeah. And we cry about the public school is failing. I read about the Jack Jackson yeah, Public School. Jackson Public School is going to Jackson fail. Public School system ain't failing. Jackson Public School System is successfully doing what it was designed to do, to miseducate black children. Right. <laughs> okay. As the uh, uh, medical and social system is uh, designed to keep you keep you down, too, in terms of all the labels and stuff like that that we, uh, okay, we so don't bring on our own children. Go ahead. No, no. So once, uh, once we, we self-education um, and we recognize the, dis the dissonance, um, then... You think in generational? It might, but you know, the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to make use of what we already got, and we're not using it. We got we got some buildings uh, here all over the country in primary, prim, predominantly, predominantly or primarily black community, big old buildings, well built buildings, lighting, got theater lighting, cameras, got gyms, and uh, they got state of the art music equipment, but they only open one day a week. You know, for general use. Yeah, churches. Yeah. Educate your own children. 
I, I don't understand why the only business that a lot of black churches is involved in is daycare. And once they get a certain age, we don't teach them no more. You got mega churches here with 10, 5, 10, 15,000 members. And the only thing you can teach is Sunday school and have, you can teach them about the white Jesus. That's, that's all we can do. I'm not saying that you, you know, that they have, you know, you know, they can't come in and create a curriculum. But you, you do have some uh, black churches that have schools. So you do have some black churches that, that have, have schools. schools. Uh, and Nicole, Adiabo, some, yeah, some I people. commend them, yeah. but we don't have enough. As a, as a whole, I get your point. Yeah. But you do have enough uh, people who Res have resources and have the know-how to at least create some supplementary curriculum. They have something going on to teach these kids, a library or something. There's enough uh, Greek organizations that some are doing some great things, but there, there, are, there are enough links and Jack and Jill's and Greek organizations and churches and federated clubs and enough people with houses with big areas like this that can put five or six kids and start teaching these kids who they are. We we got we got everything we need. We got enough money to uh to put on the to put on freak nick in Atlanta. Right, right. We got enough to do the all star basketball weekend. But until these children know but see, a lot of us don't know. That's what I'm giving you say. Well, we got to You got to start with self. And you, you look at how we are so easily separated from the things we need to know. I went to see the movie The Birth of a Nation. Right. And nobody, and I'm just going to say it. I ain't going to fix it up. Nobody with good sense could see that movie and not question the role that religion has played to keep us poor, ignorant, and paralyzed. Now, don't go out and tell nobody I said a God ain't real. <laughs> don't go out and tell nobody I'm an atheist. Now, we, we've talked before. We know okay. that you personally know that you, you, know, you... But I do want you to realize that there are four people in our community that have more power than anybody else to keep us right where we think we can't do no better. The preacher. The preacher. The pimp. The push. Politician. And I ain't saying all politicians are bad. Say no. I'm not saying that all preachers are not teaching people to be self-sufficient and to become self-aware. But if you go back and you look at that movie, by the time that Nate Parker's movie got ready to come out, we were bombarded with all this information that he raped a woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? Yeah. But this weekend, yeah, didn't it surface didn't until surface the movie came out. Because yeah. black women or women in general see movies, they spend the money, they drive, the, they mobilize the house, go see the movie. Not to say we condone anything, or, but the point was clear that it, it, it didn't come out. Clearly it didn't come out until that movie came out. Yeah. And so we got all up in arms about what Nate Parker did. Instead of going to see the movie. Instead of going to see the movie, but I bet you you couldn't get up in, uh, and I ain't got nothing against Tyler Perry, Tyler Perry, right, right with me. But I bet you couldn't get up in, uh, what is it, Boo 2? Boo 2, yeah. <laughs> right, right, yeah, Boo 2, yeah. You, you know, you couldn't get up in, in Boo 2. So, what what got you, I, and I hate to... No, go ahead, yeah, we're just, we just having a nice, yeah, nice yeah, conversation. You know, go for a station break, but your videos, what got you started doing those little sound bites, the little... Words, <laughs> little words of wisdom, or the little uh, teasers, or uh, it's, it's like it's a, it's a it's a modern day mix of reality TV mixed with uh, grandmama put put the store the lesson in your breast kind of old school lesson. I, I, it's it's a hodgepodge. It was a conversation. You just have a conversation, and whenever you get men and women together, what does the conversation? 
come back to relationships. Relationships. And they want to know why were we having such a hard time having a relationship, man. So they was talking about, you know, guy said he wanted a woman like his grandma. And when you start talking to the guys about what they wanted, none of them said that they wanted a woman with an MBA. None of them said they wanted a woman with a BMW. None of them said they wanted a woman with a 5,000 square foot house. None of them mentioned their investments. None, none of them mentioned all the stuff that, you know, us, you know, new black diva superpower sisters got going on now. They ain't want nothing about your real estate portfolio, none of that. And when I started talking about it and I made the statement about what I think some basic things would be, the first thing somebody going to ask me is, am I married? And that's the first thing I want to discredit you, am I married? Uh, your mechanic ain't driving a ragged ass car, but you want him to fix your car. <laughs> People in the restaurant ain't hungry as you are, but you want to go over there and get some meat. But it happened, and when I went over the points of that, that uh, conversation, this guy said, man, it would be cool if more people could hear this. And around that time was 2013, 2014, Facebook lets you start putting videos up. So I put a video up about don't forget to be good to him. Just basic don't forget to be, like little stuff like, let's say you let's say you come here and you just came, you had a bad day at work. Check that video out. Don't be, don't forget, don't to, forget be to be good to him. You just had a bad day at work. It ain't nothing personal. It's not that you don't love me. But you don't want to hear, you don't want to hear nothing right there. You, you don't want to hear about the kids acting up in school. You don't want to hear that the hinges are creaking on the door. You don't want to hear that the car is making a funny noise. You don't want to hear that they've sent a second notice for the insurance for the house to be paid for the next year. You don't want to hear about the escrow, the tax. You don't want to hear nothing. You want to come in. You want to take a bath. You want to get a drink. You want to chill for a minute. You want to get a full stomach. After that, then I may be able to have a conversation with you. Little basic things like that. Women are not taught that anymore. Cause I work just like you do. Yeah, so why 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 you deserve to get them? Right. Why do you deserve that? Yeah. So when when that video got picked up by Michael Basin and it went kind of viral a little bit, I kept doing them just by listening at what people was talking about, and I took something for granted. I wasn't ungrateful, but I took something for granted. That I didn't realize a lot of people don't. We don't have uh, extended families anymore. We right, have so nuclear families. You, giving you the nuggets and the information. Yeah, you know, houses don't come with these anymore. Right, 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 right. They don't come with porches anymore. You know, we, we got nine TVs in the house. Right, right, right. Everybody got a tablet, a cell phone. They got some beat right. headphone. Right. Anybody talking to nobody? Right. See what I'm saying? Right. And I live here in Jackson, and you live in. Uh, Gluck stack and you live over in Brandon and grandmama's still down in the country. Ain't nobody going to grandmama's house on Sunday. Yeah. No, Sunday. And if you do go, you're not listening to what she got No, to you're say. not listening. But when we were kids, you know, you went to your grandma's house on Sunday. Right. And it was possible that Uncle Joe and Aunt Mary and Aunt Louise was all there. And everybody could tell you something. And, and, and you had to listen. And you had to listen. You had to listen. And you had to be nice. Right. You couldn't say, I ain't going to listen or whatever, and stomp off or whatever you going to And if something happened in the neighborhood or happened to the community, then they talked to everybody so it wouldn't happen. You see what I'm saying? But now, you know, like I said, we got five TVs. Mama got a job. Daddy got a job. Kids working at McDonald's. The dog got a job because he got to watch the house because everybody, <laughs> everybody else gone. We don't have a community. We don't have no community, no community anymore. No community. You know, you sending your kids over here to the high, you know, to the high dollar private school. You got your kids in the magnet school. The KIPP program for to come in, you know, common core. All our kids going to be crazy as hell. So, you live here in Jackson. You the principal. You live way out there in Bumblejack, Mississippi somewhere. When we were in school, you didn't act a fool in English class because your English teacher was your Sunday school teacher. Your principal was your pastor at your church. Right. And the guy that was the janitor at the school, he lived two streets over. You did something crazy at school. Your mother knew it before you got home. They knew you when you registered. 
uh, Johnson, you, which Johnson you, oh, I taught, they taught your mom, they taught your uncles, they taught, and they cared. But we don't have it anymore. We don't have community anymore. We don't have families anymore. We don't even have normal families anymore. Kids go to somebody's house and they see a man in the house that's running the house. That's weird to them. Right. My grandfather, he's, you know, he's mellowed out now. He's 92 years old. When you got up in the morning and got the newspaper. You better not mess up the newspaper. <laughs> if you open that newspaper, you better put it back just if he if it would you it better be just like it when the Clarion pressed it. Because right. you think about it. When you look at people now, regardless of what our dysfunctions are, people that's kind of like still got a little good sense, they still know that okay, I might can't change this, but I know this ain't right. They had men around them. Men, men. You know them kind of men when you know you have been around somebody's house, their daddy pull up in the yard, the dog even go get up on the house. <laughs> yeah. You know, you had them kind of dads, your mom be on the phone, girl, let me go, yeah, you know, girl, don't pull phone, up in the yard, let me get out the phone. Out the phone. Nah. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have that now. Right. Right. They keep talking nowadays. <laughs> and I'm not saying that, you know, we got to be like uh what's what's the lady name? June Cleaver, you go to the door, you got a pot roast in the oven and pearls on. But we've lost a lot of of who we are because we really thought that we were going to be better off when we assimilated into this other culture and we we lost us and you got to understand now whatever it was that we had that kept us through the holes of them slave ships mm -hmm. auction block down in the slave quarter Whatever it was that we had that brought you across the transatlantic slave trade, that that we had is more powerful than crack. It's more powerful than dope. It's it. more powerful than gun violence. It's more powerful than teen pregnancy. It's more powerful than low test scores. It's more powerful than all that. We are the same people. We have the same DNA. But we don't, it's one thing that we don't do. People like to talk about the success of the Asian people. You know something that Asian people do? They honor their ancestors. They almost worship their ancestors. You have picked up U.S. News World Report and see where there's a crisis in the nursing homes of Japan and China. So they take care of their own. And we used to do that too. And I'm not saying that everybody can afford to keep granted at home, but we don't we don't honor our old people anymore. We don't even talk to our older people. And I tell anybody, I trust me, you can get to be 40 years old and still be a damn fool. Right. You ain't gonna get to be no 80, 90 years old, be crazy. When you start seeing 70-year-old black men, 70-year-old black men who got something good going on in their lives, that's an enigma. Start, start looking at the 70, start thinking about 70, 80-year-old black men you know. Do you see many of them? I'm talking about the kind that, you know, I know what you mean. That's that's successful. That it's got some. Yeah, like, and I, I'm not. And they don't all. They don't all have to be doctors and lawyers and right, energy right. chiefs. I'm talking about the man hard who, work, yeah. yeah, hard work. The, you know, the, the the truck driver, the mailman, the mechanic, the farmer. We don't see that, and when we do see that, we have no idea what we're what looking, looking at. at. Right. Yeah, we don't even know what we're looking at. Yeah, yeah. When you see an 80-year-old woman, I wouldn't care if she could not read her name in block letters on that wall. When you start looking at 85 and 90-year-old people from here in the South, you're looking at gold and you don't even know it. Because they can tell you something. We want to go to, you know, we want to go, what's, what's the, the, all these uh, life coaches? And, yeah, and young men's and all of that. Yeah, we want to go have a, sem a corporate seminar about how to, you know, how to navigate in corporate 
America. You go talk to an old black woman that had to work in some of these white people's kitchen, she can tell you how to be diplomatic. She can tell you. They can tell you how to break bread with the devil and not waste no crumbs. You go talk to an 80-year-old man that probably used to operate the, the elevator down at the Capitol. You want to talk about diplomacy? Decorum? How to put on a poker face? How to survive. How to survive? You've got people here right still here in Mississippi. Dr. Robert Smith is still alive. He's still here. Uh, you've got people like Dr. Malcolm Taylor, who's a cardiologist here. I don't know of anybody else. I'm fairly new to the area. I don't know of any other black cardiologists that have a cardiology practice that have that many cardio. Uh, uh, Dr. Gary Davis, a nephrologist. These men. Dr. L. C. Tennant. Dr. L. C. Tennant is one of the greatest doctors. That somebody need to get him a Nobel Peace Prize. He opens up in the morning. He takes care of veterans. He comes goes up to Canton, he takes care of these people at night, and whether they can pay or not, he's going to still see about them. And if the millionaire's in his care, and if the pauper's in his care, they're going to get the same care. Dr. Robert Tatum, Dr. Mark Muhammad, Dr. Obi McNair, Dr. Hicks, Dr. Rayford Smith, these people. And a lot of them came from regular humble beginnings. But if they ain't rapping or uh, they ain't playing ball. These people can tell you something. I talk about these people because right now, you know, we can go over to the University of Mississippi, just go up and then get you some financial aid or loan and your mom and dad got some money. You can go do what you want to do. Can you imagine talking to a 65, 70 year old doctor? Can you imagine what it was like trying to practice medicine in Mississippi 40, 50 years ago? Can you even imagine what it was like, 40, even in the early 70s, to come to Mississippi talking about you finna be a doctor? And in a black neighborhood to service black. Anybody. Anybody. A lot of people don't realize that at one time, you know, a young black woman right here in Mississippi and over here in Alabama where I'm from, could go in the, to go to the doctor and say she had a stomach ache. She might just have a bad case of stomach virus. They put her in the hospital, they would give her a complete hysterectomy. Leave her where, it's, and they did it as population control for poor white people. For, for, I mean, for poor black people. And we think the game has changed. The biggest problem I think that we're having now as a people is that we don't really know what happened to us why it happened and we think that it has changed the game may change the players have changed you know like you you've seen the new monopoly you know they got a little new the few new pieces change, yeah they got a few new pieces in the rules you know they got you know different the treasure chest look different you know they got a little car another shoe same thing about this what's going on with our people the game has changed they got a few new pieces you know crack was not in the in the 60s you know, we ain't had no, you know, we got a drug problem now in America. We got a drug problem now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. On. Oh, this Sophia, that, that, that's amazing to me because I'm saying, like, you know, of course, they released crack on the community as before before they had the 70s, it was a heroin. But but now we have a drug uh, epidemic. And I'm like, really? really? I was in, you know, I was in, in, in the 80s, I was between Birmingham and Atlanta. And in the 90s, you know, I was between Atlanta and I'm, you know, Mobile. Then I was between Mobile and Memphis, and now I'm here. And I can't, you know, recall, because I don't care where you get your mail at now, you still got to go back to the hood, get a good haircut, get your hat fixed, right, get right. a good chicken dinner, fish right. plate. I can't remember, I, I, you know what, I don't remember, Kyle, you know, where was the 1 800 crack? Right, right, right. <laughs> I ain't said one, but then all of a sudden, one eight hundred call me. What? You go to the drugstore now. You go in there and buy you two boxes of Sudafed. They gonna want your name, if you fingerprint. Find. 
Gonna go and say me look and need to get four boxes of Suda Fig. He going to jail. <laughs> he gonna say, okay, I'll be right back. Right. Okay. Go to jail. Keep on going to the doctor. Let go go get your prescription filled now. And let them people see where you went to North Mississippi and got you some opioid prescription. You got you some uh opioid prescriptions up from a doctor up in South Haven. You got one last month here in Jackson. Go down there in November next month and go down there to Hattiesburg and get you another one. They're going to say, said, what you wait right here? We'll be right back. But back in the day, you could go over there in Walmart, the dollar store, buy all the baking soda. Right, right. Right. Wasn't nobody going to say nothing. Yeah. So we got drug, we got drug problem. Wow, that's, that, it's amazing to me. But it, it's I, I still say it's the it's the game it's a part of the, and and it's the uh, and I just say it I mean it's just, it's the skin you in that's, it is that's the skin you in and I'm and and of course the the thing that irritates me the most about it is because people say that if I defend or if I say or if I'm even not defend but just I I live a life that I'm I just happen to be black and I'm living my life and it's pro black. Because I'm black, then I'm a racist. Well, see, I've been black three times. Right, I'm I'm a racist because you, I, you can't I, be no race. You know what I'm saying, how, how can I be? But I, but but that's what the perception is. Well, no, you can't be a race. Yes, man. Because you don't have your toolbox ain't full of all the tools you need to be a race. Now, you might be a little prejudiced, <laughs> but you got you you your toolbox. You got some stuff, other stuff you got to have in your toolbox for you to be racist. For one, you got to be able to control some banks. You got to be able to control some commerce, some land, some resources. You got to be able to control some policies and things be made. Then you can be a racist. Okay. See what I'm saying? I do. Uh, let's see. Let me pull somebody out of the air that might be like Donald Trump. <laughs> Let me ask you something. I want to go back to something you talked about earlier. You talked about the, the work you did in Memphis, and you said you wanted to bring it here. Uh, explain yeah, a little wanna, more about that. I wanted to. Yeah. Memphis has. Um, at the time I was living in Memphis, I think the poverty rate was like twenty six percent. That's almost like almost a third of the population, but a good fourth of it. That means if there are four, if you walk down the street, you see four people. It's possible that one of those people is living in poverty. Well, I saw it with the musicians first, and then I got a chance to work at the trauma center in in Memphis, and I was able to see people who just didn't have basic resources that would stop a regular ordinary occurrence from becoming a crisis. I mean, if you've got enough resources, you know, you missing the bus to get to work will not become an emergency. You wait 15 more minutes, you late for work, you deal with your boss and you're going about your business. But if you're catching the bus every day and you, you your lights may be out and this is the third time or fourth time this month you've been late for work. Right, right. And you miss one more day of work or you get suspended and you lose three days pay. It's the difference between rent. That is a big reality for a lot of people in Memphis. Well, when I came here, Jackson is not the large metropolitan area that Memphis is. But you still have a lot of great musicians who can't get what they need. Right. You still have a lot of people, where even if they're not musicians, because it was primarily for musicians, but you still have a lot of people here who cannot navigate. They don't know how to navigate the health care delivery system. They don't know how to uh, get around all of the landmines to get the social services that they need. I um, recently, within the, very recently, I was talking to, to someone who thought that they could be told that they had to leave their residence because they had certain health problems because their landlord told them you're a bad risk. And this person was getting ready to pack up everything that they had to leave their apartment because they believed that just because this man told them that, that they had to leave. 
And the, you know, even if you broke, you know, w- w- they didn't know about the lease. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, they didn't know that even if you did violate the lease, you there, there had so to have a, you, you had so many days. Right, the notice. And I was just, I was just, and this, this, this wasn't in 1917. This was in 2017. And with, I know that we got a lot of things in place, but apparently it's not enough. So do you have information on, on to the point we have like uh, if you say well if if you contact this me or contact my website or then I can help you with you know with odd. I haven't built the website here yet. Okay. I still have to go through. Uh, you have to file to make sure you get your name or that you can do a DBA. So I've got some homework that I have to do. Like to bring it here to Jackson. Right? To bring it here to Jackson, and then that's when I'm going to. Uh, you, all the all these wonderful people that I see because you know it's a lot of money down here in Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> my, I see people driving BMWs and Mercedes, and I see people in the newspaper they having big balls and oh, man, they got on fancy dresses. Like and, that, but y'all hadn't seen our house, you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> I mean, I'm saying they got big, they got but they going these big balls, and I'm seeing where they having these big million dollar galas, and everybody got on tuxedo and dress. So I know that when I come here and I start working with you know certain agencies to be an extension or an ancillary service or I'm sure that I will be able to find you know the benefactors who will be able to make this possible because we're going to do it right you know we're going to have a board right. so I can have some smart people you know I got to have some doctors and lawyers and butchers and bakers and Indian chiefs right. and all that well I got to go to something else you said um because um, we kind of touched on it and, and I guess kind of skipped over a little bit when you was in Memphis and and I guess and also in some previous conversations you said uh, I guess um, I, I almost want to call it the Hall of Fame so to speak the I am blues the I am blues tour oh we were at a blues showcase okay and I ain't seen no black people I, mean, I ain't seen no black people I mean I saw one every now and then but it just you know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't go to. I, I don't think I could go to an egg roll fest for not seeing no Asian people. That's what's up. That's what's up. So when we got there, they had a lot of bands, and so I decided that uh, I came to the conclusion rather that they was like you know better right, Mama. They liked the music, but you know they ain't know where it came from. So during that moment, we just kind of told them where the blues came from, what it really was. And in the power of that narrative, along with some props and some of the singing, they got it. And I came home and I started thinking about how useful that would be as a living exhibit. Because when you go when you go see a blues exhibit, I've been to a museum, they say it's a blues museum. Right. You see some hats and harmonicas and shades, the old suitcases. Guitars. They might have you know, a few bowls of cotton over in the corner. And they have some nice big posters where you can read about what happened. And they might even have some blues music. They have some stores like Muddy Waters, Holland Wolf, people like that. But do they ever tell you where it got started and where it came from? No. Oh, it's not a living. So I decided to put together a presentation called I Am the Blues. It is a living exhibit in which I uh, become a griot through narratives, through song, through images, through props. We use actual leg irons, whips, nooses, actual reproductions of the slave auction marketing uh, posters, if that's what you want to call them, because they used to they used to advertise that we, that they was gonna sell us, how much we was gonna be going for, you know, just like a car. They tell you we got a nineteen two thousand seventeen Maxima with so many miles on it at the car place. They would do that for us. So we you, we create this scenery where they see where this came from, and we do that for maybe the first 30, 40 minutes. Then there's a brief intermission, and then we come back with a band. And we do the house rock and show enough real blues where you can almost uh, 
smell the fish grease in there and be sitting around waiting for the fight to break out. So how would somebody see that? I mean, so they had to call you to come out? Or we could, right now, we uh, have been talking with the, the uh, B.B. King Museum about bringing it there. Okay. I have spoken with a actual uh, African American Cultural Heritage Museum in Louisiana to bring it there, but it's available. Right, so they just contact you to be having brought uh, to They this. can go to the website iamtheblues.net okay. or redvelvet.com. You spell red with two D's. Or they can call me at 901 258 6565. It's a Memphis number, but it's here in Jackson. Okay, say the number one more time 901. Mm hmm. Two five eight six five six five, and they can have whatever version they want. They can have the storytelling version, where it's the simple version. They can, or they can do both. So, now, I want to. I wanted for folks that just didn't really get it. Besides, just the the because um, to me, uh, uh, people have knowledge, a wealth of knowledge. And you don't have to have the the accolades behind you necessarily to be able to have a wealth of knowledge. But for some folks, you don't. Well, I, I just don't believe that. I, I, I don't buy into that. I, I don't buy into that. Oh, you I don't? believe I believe that uh, people have a story to tell. You know what I'm saying? And people, oh. you know, but some for, some for the folks that believe that you have to have accreditation, so to speak, to be able to. Um, be able to share the uh, the experience, oh. or to be able to, to to validate the story. Talk more about the the real bear, velvet experience, the album. So the album, the album, because guys, if you didn't know, Real Velvet was an artist, and if you didn't catch that part, because besides the internet sensation that she is, she has an artist. She's, she is an artist. Oh. Okay, so. Well, you know, I don't, self-made, by the way. I don't, I don't have, you know, I don't, I, I have a nursing degree. Yes, ma'am. That's how I make my, you know, that's how I keep the lights on here. I that's go to the hospital to see about sick people. Yeah, that's Other than that, you know, usually, I don't know now. I don't know who your audience is, because, you know, for some people, if, if you don't have more degrees than a thermometer, they don't want to hear nothing you got to say, you don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. But I will say that, you know, Bill Gates was a college dropout. That's what's up. Now, you need a master's yeah. degree to work with Bill Gates for him to cut you a check, but Bill Gates ain't got that. Right. <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? You understand. Thoroughly. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I don't have no problem, you know, with degrees. Like I said, a thermometer got degrees. <laughs> but ain't one for damn if it can't tell you the water hot. She got a few degrees. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. I just. I. You know. I just. I'm. I'm a nurse. Right. Just regular nurse. But now, what I used to do is that if you was doing something and you looked like you was real good at it, I would watch what you was doing and let me tell you how you did it. Now, if you just so happen to have, you know, been in school, you know, if you was pastry, you was making pies in there, and your Pie crust come out real good. If you happen to have gone to a French pastry school, you know that's good. But if your grandmama taught you how to do that, I just want mine yeah, to turn out that that way. <laughs> so you know, if you're doing something right, then yeah, I'm. Hey, I, I, that's 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 what I prescribe to. You right. Know if you, like you take Dick Gregory. Right. Right. Which we have the opportunities. <laughs> I love Dick Gregory. Right. And he was a. We yeah, loved him. No, because Dick Greg knew what was going on. Right. Yeah, yeah. And he liked us. <laughs> he liked y'all. Yeah. Did you realize that a lot of times when Dick Greg was in the presence of a lot of people, could y'all not tell that he was kind of like really just tolerating them? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. He said, son, do you do it? Yeah. <laughs> so but, no, I mean, you know, if, yeah, he, uh, if somebody asks me a question. Yes, ma'am. And I don't know. Yes, ma'am. I don't have no problem saying I don't know. Right. And if they ask that question in real, real intelligent, may you ever ask my ask you a question so says it make you want to go find out what the hell they got? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I don't have a problem saying I don't know. Right, right, right. But as I've lived long enough, I'm very proud to say that I have collected some people in my life. Right. That I can go get the answer. That I can say, hold on, Jimmy, I don't know, but I know somebody that can tell yeah. you, hold on. Right. So, I mean, you know, if somebody asks me something, I, I t you know, I tell them what I know, or I go, look, let me tell you who you talk to. Because I don't know how to build a house, but I live in one. Right. <laughs> right. What you're hearing is uh, old school wisdom. I mean, you're hearing some wisdom that, uh, that uh, 
It's just I don't, don't get old people. You don't get it. You don't get it no more. Well, you know, we ain't got no old people. You know, we ain't got no stop, old people. Stop with the old stuff. You know what I'm saying? You know, we don't, we don't want to be stop, old. Stop we don't want to be old. I'll be 50 my birthday next year. Right, you wearing it well, though. Right, but see, nobody don't want to be fit because yeah, people yeah. coming up now. I'm just saying, you do, you wear it well, though. Right, and it's just good. I mean, you ain't got no problem that you know you get your little witch hazel, <laughs> wine, <laughs> sex. Hey, 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 hey. My mom was watching. <laughs> Who you Ma, been watching it? My mom. Oh, your mama was watching it? Your mama was watching it? Okay, you no, got sorry, you Cal. Go you, you go oh, ahead. Wait, wait, you wait, 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 so we can't talk about sex. No, you, no, come on, no, How just, you come on. This Cal. <laughs> Go ahead, business. Sex. Anyway, Cal, what I'm saying, you got all these older people, but nobody, you know, nobody don't want to be old no right, more. Right, right, you know, because right. you see what you say. You see what they say. Sixty is the new forty. Oh yeah. yeah. And forty is the new twenty. And I used to think that that was just the marketing, you know, some cool thing. But when you start looking at people now. They they go on for that though. They follow for that, and when you talk to some people that's like forty, do you remember when you talked to you? You ever been when you was a little boy? You ever been hung around forty year old man, forty five year old man, fifty year old man? They wasn't nothing to play with, was? <laughs> yeah. They, they did not play. Right. No play. No play to it. Your uncle Rochester, <laughs> when he was forty five years old, did not play. Your Aunt May Francis, when she was 45, she didn't play. My daddy. <laughs> didn't play. But see, now, Mama. you know, people say 40 is the new 20. Really? It is. It, it is. It is. Yeah, because at 20, it's like you're talking to a 20 year old. Because people don't, you know, I have a co worker was, that was joking with us about we was talking about going out and getting turned up, and he said that it was raining one Friday evening. We was getting ready to get out of work. He said, Y'all too old to be out here in these streets when it's wet. Then he said, You know what? Y'all too old to be out here in these streets when it's dry. <laughs> you don't have people that, that want to be that person. Everybody want to be their kids' friends. We want to raise our kids by the Dr. Spock book. You know, Dr. Spock, you know how many children Dr. Spock had? Now, he had yeah. no children. Period. Dr. Spock had no children. Of course, now he's a doctor, though. He got doctor in front of him. <laughs> you get the doctor in front of your name. You get a sign. I'm going to say what you If you, say. especially with our people, and, I, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking education now. I, I understand. You understand. Because you know you you got to have you you got to have your work permit. Right. You don't get no work permit. You don't get no job. Right. And you know we are taught to go get a job. We ain't taught to create a business. business. Right. Your right. daddy done built all these houses over right. here. Your daddy's got a construction right. company. You're not taught to go. You know, son, why don't you go? And one of y'all be an architect. One of y'all be an engineer. And come on, help me. One of y'all go be a county. Go and promote this business. Oh, we want you to go get your job so you can put on your suit. Right, so you don't have to work like this no more and all this kind of stuff. So you can go. Okay. And that's how come Jose and Lupe them come over here building everything. But if you get doctor in front of your name, you ain't got to have no common sense, no mother wit. You know, your granddaddy might have had sixth grade education. He got 200, 200 acres of land down there in Simpson County, right. free and clear. Right. You got an MBA. I ain't got nothing. Yes, you do. You got it's ten feet between your house. No, it's it's ten feet between your house and the fence where your neighbor's house is, and then it's ten feet on the other side. So you got twenty feet between you and your neighbor, <laughs> and you got a house, yeah. and you got uh you got a you got a uh, more of your you got a nice yeah okay yeah you, you got you got a good. nice lease on your car. <laughs> you got some clothes. Yeah, you look good. You got a chip on your Mastercard now. Yeah. Yeah, you got a pocket space and come to the garage. But if you go and get this one more degree and get that doctor, it's kind of like water. If you get that one more degree, you'll be boiling. You get that one more degree, you can sell ice to Eskimos, you can sell convicts to chain, you can sell matches to the fire department because they would believe everything you say. So go get you a doctor. And now that you can go online, you can almost stand there, pay a tuition and print your own diploma. Now everybody going to school. Why people get oh, she got something against online degree. But it's so simple now. You know, 
I'm thinking about going back and getting me a, getting me a doctor degree. See how, you know, just see. <laughs> see if I can get people to listen to what I'm saying. Oh, you already man, got some. You, 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 you already got them listening now. And uh, all I want people to do, all I want us to do, is sit back and realize that some of what we've been told, we ain't right. Yeah. We didn't get a chance to get you to sing, or we didn't get a chance to sing. We'll bit. do it next time. You know, we had all that in mind. You know. You got the piano back there. You know. Be all right. you know, you can't give people too much for free. They won't appreciate it. You're right. You're right. You're right. Where's the website again that they can see? I, I am. They can go to. I don't know. Somebody told me you could just Google me and stuff will pop up. I, I know you can do that with us. You know. You, you can. <laughs> but I Google me and some lady with the same name. I got. She shot. Beat up somebody. Or shot somebody. Ain't me. <laughs> So I don't want people Googling their name. Just go to the site. Go direct to the site. So where they go? You can go to redvelvet.com with two Ds. You can go to iamtheblues.net. And book the show. You can go to crystaltuckerspeaks.com. That's if you want, you know. You know I, I do. I have a... If you can handle it. No, I, you know, I, t I tailored my uh, no, no, I presentations, they want truth. you know, to the audience, you know what I'm saying. I'll put on a nice suit and corsage, nice pumps and conservative hairstyle and come in and do your women's empowerment breakfast. And you can almost script what you want me to say. And then I have the other one called Put It In The Bag, and that is for children in which I go in with my big bag and I teach children just how much black people have contributed. That if we were to leave this country and we were to pack a suitcase and take everything with us that we literally brought or built or created here, all these things would be in the bag. I saw that video. That was an awesome video. Wow. That woman that, that woman told me, though, she said, really, she said, you know, if you if you people, if you people don't like how you treated over here, why don't you go back to Africa? It's I mean, she she was serious. But she didn't know. She didn't know what all we had done. Yeah, yeah. And it's all right for her not to know. But it's not good. For it's you. not all right. Well, that's not to know. Right. So that's why I asked her, ma'am. I know you're watching this video on your phone. I need your cell phone because the technology that's the foundation of the cell phone was created by a black man and the internet. The technology that's the foundation of the internet was created by a black woman. I'm gonna need that. You know, they like peanut butter. Sandwich. I'm gonna need that peanut butter sandwich. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> you got to give me that back. Because George Washington Carver did that. So you said the video was put it in the bag. The video has put that in the bag, and so I've decided to turn it into a presentation for children. Okay. Where the children get to play a game with me. I come in, I start telling them, you know, some things about some of these great things that they see every day. That's what's up. And how they enjoy it, and how great it is. That's what's up. And I hand it to them, and each child gets to come up, and he pulls something out of the bag. And once I explain to him that this is like a toy car, that the first car that was ever made was made by a black man, black man. then we get to put that in the bag. What about the, the name of the video earlier, the one that, that started it that you said that... Uh, Don't Mason. forget to be good to him. Don't forget to be good to him. Okay. Men like that video. A lot of women got mad, got mad about the video. So. And, and, and we can't we can't talk about sex. <laughs> but I was explaining I to women. Mind, mind I was explaining to women that um, I think what made the video jump off was when I explained to women that when when men uh, want to have sex, that's the, their way of connecting to us. And when we tell them no, that it actually hurts their feelings. It, it, it can actually hurt their feelings because they don't, you know. You all are wired differently than we are. And people actually listen to it and, and it kind of took off. And so from there, I just started talking about things that people talk about. They may not agree with me. I'm not saying that I'm always right because I put up some videos and when I start reading the comments, I'm like, oh, man. And you start, under, you start seeing why people believe the things that they believe. Right. And, and and they that's that's their reality. And so I've I've learned just as much from the people that watch me as as I watch them. 
Especially now since you can cast the Facebook to the TV. Oh. And I'll be simply reading these comments. And to them it's real. But we haven't seen a lot of healthy relationships. We've seen a lot of dysfunction. Um, it's created. I mean, Real Housewives of Atlanta. Oh, yeah. Basketball wives. <laughs> Well, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, it's more drama and just you. Talking. You get that? Right. We don't. We don't. Don't nobody even remember when Julia used to come on TV. Right. Remember Julia the nurse right. with a little boy named Corey? Yeah. Okay. So you don't. You don't have that. So if you had to say, you say I got something I want to close with, or just leave on your mind, or leave on your plate, what would that be? To people in general. Mm -hmm. You can't get along with other people. You cannot even get people to even imagine that they will respect you until you know who you are. You don't know who you are. You can't get along with nobody. Nobody can't get along with you because you can't get along with your damn self. I can't demand anything from you and beg you for something at the same time. For I want to see people, my people, the reason why I do those videos, I want to see my people know who they are. I want them to know just what they're capable of doing. I want them to know that it is very possible for us to live as a free people, but it ain't going to be free. Right. It's going to cost something. Right. Right. Yeah, and it's not going to be easy. And if we want to know how to get free, all we got to do is go back a couple of generations and talk to them old people who had, they had it going on. They, they had it. They had all the pieces of the puzzle dumped out here on the table, and then we came along with this good shit. We done. You remember when your grandmom didn't have to have the last word talking to your granddad? Yeah. He would come in and talk, he'd be popping out talking crazy. Let's say your granddad's name was Mr. Johnson. Your grandma would say, okay, Mr. Johnson. But we messed the game up. We we wanted to go over there and you know who did it. Uh, poor black folks didn't have enough money to go eat in the white man restaurant, no way. They couldn't stay in the hotel, no way. So what damn did them do it late if they integrated? You, your black ass wasn't gonna get <laughs> poor black ass wasn't gonna get to be a member of the country club, no way. So what did you give a damn yeah, if the country care, club man. got integrated? Right. But you over here, you <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. How could we get to be <laughs> You know, you know, you're the pool report on the railroad, right? You just want to make sure that you're getting your right money for your right jobs, you can take care of your kids. You know, you ain't finna come over here and be a member of Country Club. You ain't got them kind of cons. You don't give a damn if they integrate the swimming pool or the country club. That is correct. You don't give a damn. <laughs> but you, <laughs> Mr. Graduate yeah. of, you know, <laughs> you, you, you want to be able to show that your accomplishments set you apart. You have achieved these things. And you just, you just as smart as a white man. You didn't even get a chance to go to his school and let you in his school. You got to come back in with this piece of sheepskin. Why can't you get in the country club? I say a lot of times, I'm sorry that uh, we, uh, we, uh, we left a, we left a class system in England and came over here. So supposedly right. like they did, but then they got over here, did a massive place of approximation, declaration of independence, all these documents to say we're going to all be created equal. And then set up the same class system that was over and there. And that's not right for them because yeah. white people did that. <laughs> right. I, I, you know, they did that. Right. My problem is the stuff that we started doing. We, 
falling behind them, following suit, trying to get all this class, and right. and and, and we, so this classism uh, was was the root for the racism. Because I got to be higher, and, and whether or not I'm a right. whatever organization I belong to, I got to be better than you. You know what right. I'm saying? Yeah. And see, that comes from, you know, I guess if I was going to leave anything, I guess, you know, that all come from looking up the monkey's ass, trying to find out where the circus come. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we, we have been talking to <laughs> the, the monkey don't talk. <laughs> We've been talking to That man can edit, can edit anything. Miss Crystal Tucker, you can check her out on Facebook. <laughs> yes, True Google, or not? You can check so her out I, on YouTube. Is supposed to be the good time? <laughs> you can check her out on YouTube and catch one of her many viral videos we certainly appreciate the, 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 the fire the fire time that we that we have spent <laughs> and it kind of reminds me of the conversation we had with Dick Gregory it's, it's, it's ironic that you mention it and that's not just to shout out the fact that we, we, oh, we yeah, but check but, out but, Dick Gregory I love Dick so, Gregory but, but you know, you know, our conversation put us in, in the vein of what kind of a lot of what he talks about he says the ship is going down and you might as well get comfortable and get a seat in in the ship, um, but in spite of that, he feels like um, getting information out to our people can make at least make the the ride down a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more. Man, if I could get as many people listening to me as Dick Gregory and be as informed as he, is. oh, he was brilliant. He was so that would brilliant. be great. And he was studied to me. I mean, he, he you, it just didn't just pop off at the mouth. He had he had something to say, and he had the information to back what he was saying. He, you know? he was so brilliant. He'll make you think he was crazy, if that makes any sense. He was so versed on 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 so many things that had nothing to do that you never. I didn't even know there was a book for that. I didn't, and he had books everywhere. Um, he had, it, 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 he just make you think he was crazy. What were you going to say? You ever heard the fact that a, a wise man can play a fool, but a fool can't play the wise man? I never seen Dick Gregory in a tuxedo, not that I can recall. Because you can sit here right now, you can start, if you want to do that, you can sit here and go around this room and kind of start estimating how much money I spent to decorate this room. You can look at a person and tell how much money they spent. You can look at a person and tell how much they had sense enough to keep. Right. Same thing with a person like Dick Greg. Dick Greg can, because you don't know, and that's what we suffer from as people sometimes, because I don't know what the hell you talking about. I think you don't know what the hell you talking about. Right, right, right. Speaking of Dick Gregory, they just came out with an article talking about, remember he talked about manganese? Man, manganese, manganese? Manganese. The study, they have proven that it happened, that it really did happen in St. Louis, and they are looking for people to come forward to know when they went through there and even tore down the whole communities in the whole neighborhood. You know, I forgot we was kind of like on camera, because I've been talking to y'all like we was just talking here in my living room. So, so keep that in mind when you're watching the video. <laughs> and Ma, it was him. See, if, if you all had had me to get up, Come into a nice, you know, like generic studio with a little <laughs> desk and a little couch. I probably would have been more, you know, I probably would have been better behaved. See, see, see. No, you, we got the real deal. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah. Hey, speaking of shameless plugs, don't forget to go check out our videos as well as get our t-shirts. We got t-shirts out now. I got t-shirts? Yes, man, we got t-shirts that say messages on them.